This look is brought to you by hours of reading and a complete and utter lack of patience for my own hair. You know what? We're just gonna... We're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. I should have been a hell of a lot better at actually starting this vlog at a reasonable hour in the day because I'm not actually at work this week. So I could have vlogged during the day, but here we are. It's currently Tuesday, just before midnight, and I have had a very slow but still productive week so far. So I've just been working on videos and Patreon and stuff like that, getting stuff in where I can, and I've also been reading the Starless Sea. I am now 323 pages into this, so a reasonable dent of the way through. <laughs> I'm just not bothered at all, and I'm really sad about it because I love The Night Circus so much and this one just isn't hitting me in any way, shape or form. I'm just kind of going with it and I feel like that's all you can really do because there's lots of different stories. They're all starting to gradually come together, but they're still very random. I don't know, I think what's getting me is that it really really reminds me of Every Heart a Doorway by Sean Maguire, which I don't like. <laughs> it's really reminding me of that because there's just lots of talk of everybody going through their doorway and they might lose it and not be able to return and there's a whole thing about how people are trying to find their doorways and I'm just like this sounds so similar to every heart of doorway. Even though it's not the same story at all, the parallels are uncanny. <laughs> I will say it's better written than Shona Maguire's though. It's lovely to read in terms of the writing's really nice and the attention to detail and everything I was saying in the previous vlog basically, but there's not enough of a driving force within this book to keep me interested. I will finish it just because I've already read 300 pages and I do want to do a book review on this, but just meh is my general thoughts so far which is such a shame. I am going to try and kind of brainstorm what it is about it that I'm not really vibing with to try and break it down a little bit more for the review and such, but for now I'm just feeling very deflated about it. So that's fun. <laughs> I haven't really read anything else besides that. I did start reading The Passion of Hades, which is book two in the Hades Trial series. It's only about 200 pages. They're all on Kindle Unlimited and I just decided to pick this up as a kind of quick ebook type situation, pick it up here and there. I really enjoyed the first book so I'm looking forward to reading the second one and I may go and do so now, I'm not really sure, I'm kind of just like a little bit unsettled because <laughs> tomorrow is my birthday. <laughs> so I, I kind of, I don't know, like there's something about the stroke of midnight into a birthday that I'm just like, I can't settle even though nothing is going to happen. I'm just going to magically be 23 years old. I will tell you about any plans that I have tomorrow because I don't know how it's going to play out. Obviously I don't have anything dramatic planned because lockdown still. I've kind of avoided mentioning my birthday online because I ended up having a problem with my wish list and shut it very early into February. So I didn't want people asking about that and I also didn't want people to be like suggesting live show celebrations and stuff because I know that we did the drunk live show for Becca and Gavin's birthday last year and I know that people are a big fan of those but I've just been doing so many live shows recently that doing another one for my birthday just didn't really seem like a celebratory thing. It would have just exhausted me so I've just kind of not mentioned it. <laughs> But I am going to try and celebrate in any little way I can. I will be filming an unboxing book haul and I'm probably also going to have a haul in this video because I do have some stuff that I think aren't necessarily book related so I will show those in this video. But otherwise I'm just going to try and like treat myself as much as possible <laughs> and actually just relax and stuff and do everything that I want to do so I'm looking forward to that. But for now I don't really have too much else to update on so I shall be back tomorrow. I'm sure there will be lots of vlogging tomorrow. <laughs> As Rapunzel for one of the many iconic scenes of Tangled would say, it's my birthday! <laughs> Officially 23 years old and feels no different. <laughs> it's currently 11am, I haven't really done much of anything so far besides get ready, take some photos, I have been eating easter egg chocolate for breakfast because why not? <laughs> currently having a coffee and just kind of replying to messages and such. Already the love has been incredible and I am so so grateful. For everybody who reached out and has said happy birthday to me. Once I've had my coffee, I'm going to be filming my birthday unboxing, which I'm very excited about. 
But as I said yesterday, I will also have a haul in this video because anything that isn't a book from my wish list will be included in here. I don't know at what point in the day that will come because Becca has said that I have something arriving today from her. So I'm kind of just waiting for that to arrive so that I can show that along with them. But we shall see how it goes. I've received such an overwhelming amount of stuff. Like I don't even entirely understand how because I closed my wish list really early on in February because I had a problem with it. Completely deleted today. I did make a new one but I've kept that one private for the most part but over the past couple of days a wave of things have just been arriving <laughs> from people who I didn't even expect so it's been really lovely and I've been getting really overwhelmed about it because as I said in last week's vlog I've been having not a great time recently so <laughs> I don't know I'm one of these people who gets really overwhelmed with just the fact that somebody thought of me. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I haven't even like touched anything yet and I'm already like gushing my love to everybody so I'm just gonna stop that right now. I feel very cute today. I've got one of my favourite dresses on and this shirt which I always seem to wear on my birthday for some reason but I don't know, I just love the outfit so I'll show you that in a second but the plan for today is basically to film but I'm quite excited to film because it will be the unboxing and I think I'm also going to film my March TBR while I'm here. It might sound silly to be doing work on your birthday because most people would be like nothing but I like filming so I don't mind and then this evening I'm basically going to make a personal feast. <laughs> The plan basically is to order all of my favourite food, obviously within reason and I will definitely have some leftover for tomorrow but order my favourite food, I've already got dessert covered and spend the evening watching things on Disney Plus. I really feel like watching Hamilton and Tangled which are all my favourite things on there so I'm probably going to be watching those even though they will both make me cry <laughs> but they also both make my heart sing so has to be done. So yeah, other than that, I don't really have too much to update on it right now. I don't know how much reading I'll do today because I just feel very, like, restless. But I don't know, we shall see. I will update you as I go through my day, so. Let me show you my outfit. So this is what I'm currently wearing. So we have this sunflower shirt and the dress, which I absolutely adore. And I feel like the epitome of cottagecore. Is this not adorable? <laughs> I'm going to do this part of the vlog here because I don't want to dismantle the camera setup yet. So, <laughs> hello. I'm here to show you things that my friends got, starting with these, which I actually opened a few days ago. A pair of earrings that were gifted to me by Brit from Basically Brit. And as you can see, they just have these leaves inside. I have actually already worn these <laughs> um, and I absolutely love them. They're really lightweight and I just think they are adorable fitting with the woodland aesthetic. So thank you so much Brit for these. They are adorable. And also on the jewelry front, I do have this necklace. It was gifted to me by Jean and I adore this. So I've been wanting to get into necklaces more. As you can see, it's like double-sided. It is this beautiful green colour and gold, which I don't have too much gold jewellery, but I do want to change that. And it also reminds me of crystals. I just absolutely love how simple that is and can imagine wearing it a lot. So thank you so much, Jean, for that. You guys know I love my jewellery. I am actually on a bit of an endeavour to make a jewellery stand. <laughs> or jewellery hanger rather for necklaces because I have gotten a few fairly recently but I don't have proper storage for them so at some point this week you might actually see me doing a bit of a DIY project. It could go awfully wrong but... And then I do have the gifts from Fairy Loot. That shouldn't be a plural but it is apparently. <laughs> Starting with these ones which I actually opened yesterday or like I knew what they were yesterday because it says brownandblonde.co.uk and this is a huge tray of brownies. <laughs> I knew what this was the second it arrived because I've had these before and they are incredible. So if I show you inside, and inside I have all of this. <laughs> I think I have tried all of these before besides maybe this top one here. So I am very happy to have these, thank you very much. <laughs> I do however have this lot too. What is this? <laughs> I'm going to start with the Amazon parcel because I know this is from Fairy Loot because if you can see one side is a little bit open and the note fell out. So the note says, happy birthday Ashley, this will make sense soon, we promise. Have a magical week off from Team Fairy Loot. It smells so strong. <laughs> it smells nice though. What is it? 
That's why it smells strong. It's incense sticks. Julie incense sticks. Oh my god. That will be why I could smell it. <laughs> oh, that does smell lovely though. That's exciting. I haven't had incense sticks before. Big fan of those. And it doesn't smell like the sort that will give me headache because there's quite a lot of really strong incense. But that smells really nice. We also have a box that says fragile on it. Oh, this also smells nice. It's Artemis. Artemis was known in Greek and Roman mythology, Diana, as a goddess of hunt, synonymous with the wilderness and moon. This candle is perfect for when you want to reconnect with nature, so ground yourself with a fresh sense of mint and eucalyptus. Artemis is a strong and important figure within ancient Greek culture. So when you are in need of a bit of goddess empowerment, light her up. Oh my god! Classical Candle Co! That's so cool! I didn't know this existed! And there we have the Artemis candle. I didn't know this existed. Oh. I'm very happy. I have a Greek myth candle. I love it. But then there's also the massive box, which I'm not quite sure what this could be. Oh my god. It's a whole bunch of dried wildflowers. Oh my god. And there's also some dried out lavender sprigs put in with it. Oh my god. I love dried out flowers because you can actually keep them. <laughs> These are so beautiful. I've actually been looking for more things to put in my room in a very particular place and I think these will do perfectly. I love the colours of them as well with the autumn colours. And then this, I am actually going to hang on my wall upside down when a certain thing arrives because I do have more uh, shells coming from my room. So these will be a great addition to help decorate them. This is so thoughtful! <laughs> Thank you so much to the Fairy Loot team. I... You've gone above and beyond, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm a very happy girl. I've been having a great day. <laughs> I think Becca said that her present won't be arriving today after all, so... So this part of the haul is done. I know a few people have said that things might be arriving late, so I don't know if there's going to be more things shown throughout this video, but you'll see that if it does. I do actually want to film my March TBR so I'm going to put my camera battery back on charge so that I can film some more and then have my cozy evening. <laughs> Just that sobbing at the end of Hamilton again, aren't I? <laughs> Why do I like this? It's just... I'm gonna watch Tangled, which is just gonna make me cry all over again, so that's fun. <laughs> but I do have a couple of presents to open that arrived while I was eating food, so I haven't opened them yet, so let's do so. <laughs> I've been crying. I do have two parcels and I believe one of them is from Jade. I don't know which one and I don't know who the other one is from, but we shall find out. It's this one that's from Jade. Okay, so Jade has got me. <gasps> the Raven's Ballad by Emma Ham. This is one of the Otherworld series. So I recently read Heart of the Fae, which is a part of that series, and this is one of the later books in the series. I don't know, I don't think this is a direct continuation. I think maybe the first two are directly related to each other, whereas the rest of them follow side characters from that story. So I don't think it matters which order you read this in, but... <sighs> that cover's so cool! Look at her! And her crown. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, yes, this does follow a couple of the side characters and I'm so intrigued. I'm not going to read the synopsis out of this one specifically just until I am completely sure but I am just wanting to gain so many of Emma Ham's books now. <laughs> so thank you for adding to that collection. Oh my god I was so excited. We also have a swan and a raven on the back holding a key of some sort. Oh, this is just beautifully designed. I love this. If you don't know, Emma Ham is a self-published fantasy romance author. She has like 24 books out or something, it's ridiculous, but I've enjoyed the two books I've read from her so far. I did an interview with her and she is lovely, so I'm now just like, I must read everything. <laughs> I do also have this, which is really quite large. Oh, that was satisfying. Who got me this? Beth! Happy birthday, Ashley. Have a brilliant day and I hope you find lots of moments of joy. Love, Beth! Oh my god! An illustrated treasury of Scottish castle legends. 
Look how cool that looks! I did get a companion book to this when I was filming my book haul earlier. Again, I got these recommendations from Pris and I was just really particularly intrigued by this one because it's not very often that you find collections of legends that are surrounding castles specifically. I think this is the first time I've seen one, so I am very, very intrigued. This is entirely illustrated, so we do have pages like this. Oh, there's also really beautiful things like this where it's just all typography. <laughs> I mean, that is a mood and a half. This looks so cool! Another one to add to the mythology collection and will go beautifully with its companion. Thank you so, so much, Beth, for this. Oh, these are the companions. So I have this one. So I just need to get this one now, which is the mythical creatures one. I couldn't find that one on Amazon, so I don't know if it's more difficult to get hold of, but I have two out of three and I'm very happy about that. Again, thank you so much, Beth, for sending this my way. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> so we are at the end of my official birthday. I have had a far better day than I ever thought I would. Like, it's not even like loads of things have happened. It's just been constant lovely messages from you guys and just... <laughs> it's been overwhelming. I honestly thought that I would have a pretty crappy birthday because mental health has been on the ground. My dad actually has COVID. <laughs> which I haven't mentioned because it's not a bad case of it, which I am so, so thankful for, like so unbelievably thankful for, but it doesn't mean that it's any less worrying because like it's hit close to home, you know? <laughs> and I'm a worrier. I'm going to worry about my dad. Of course I am. But honestly, I'm just thankful that he's okay. <laughs> Um, and I always find my birthday to be a weird time, not because like there's anything bad associated with it. I just never know what to do for it but then my brain likes to romanticize every situation and make a big deal out of everything so it's always like on one side of my brain I want to do all these grand plans whereas on the other side I'm just like well actually I don't want to do all of the typical things that you would do for a birthday so my brain will just be at war with itself for the entire month so I wasn't really anticipating too much for this birthday but it's just <laughs> it's blown me away and I know I've said that countless times today so I will just stop babbling on now, but I do just want to thank you again for making it what it was because it was definitely down to you guys. <laughs> that being said, I am probably going to go and watch Tangled. I don't know, I, will I do that or will I read? I'm not sure. I'm feeling a bit fidgety, so I don't feel like I can read and I've been like that all day, even though I desperately want to read a couple of the books that I'm reading actually. So I'm just like, <laughs> I want to read, but I'm not reading. How does this work? <laughs> What I am going to do first though is take my makeup off because I have cried half of it into my eyeballs so my eyes are stinging. <laughs> so yes, I will probably leave it for tonight and check in with you tomorrow. most unstable tripod and I am in the most random place because we have more boxes to open. By the way, it's now Thursday. <laughs> I'm currently just taking a break because I am needing to do some work, but my phone just keeps glitching and I'm getting really frustrated by it. So I'm just like leaving my phone for a bit <laughs> and I'll come back to that afterwards. So in the meantime, I have received a box from Becca. So I presume this is the birthday present. I'm very intrigued. <laughs> you didn't! <laughs> oh my god, you actually did. <laughs> okay, we have a little, little starry, little starry thing. But, <laughs> oh my god! She knitted me a blanket. Is it a blanket or a scarf? It's really long. <laughs> I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> Yes. Just yes. I love it. I'm very happy right now. Could I be any more green if you tried? I'm just very shit. Let's see what's in in this. Is this the same brand that this came from? I think it is. Oh, they're pretty. Look at those. They're so cool. Oh my god. They're gonna look so cool. Oh, 
I don't want to put them in now just because I am doing a thing for work on camera so I kind of need to look the same as when I was filming earlier but I love those. I love them so much. Thank you Becca, I love them. Oh, we stand, we stand, we stand, we stand. I'm gonna be wrapped in this all the time. <laughs> I can't imagine how much time went into this. But that is not the only mail I received today because I got this and I know what this is and I'm very excited. So this is the Ember and the Ashes set that we've done at Fairy Loop. I can't wait to see these in person. I've just been looking at photos for so long that I'm like, ah. <laughs> oh, they wrapped it really well. Peanuts. Mm. The edges, oh my God. I need to put them in order, hang on. This is the An Ember in the Ashes set, the Fairy Loot Special Editions. So not only do we have these hardback sets which match, but if I can spin them around, look at the sprayed edges. How cool are they? So this is the first one, obviously, An Ember in the Ashes. These ones are signed inside, and then the front has this cool design on it to match the side. Then we have book two, A Torch in the Night, which has this design underneath. A Reaper at the Gates, which I love the color palette of so much. And we have this beautiful dark green underneath. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> and then we have A Sky Beyond the Storm, which is purple underneath. And then as well with the set, we do have this beautiful art print which is foiled and just absolutely beautiful. I love this so so much. I don't have a clue who anybody is yet because I haven't actually read the series myself but I've been meaning to read it for such a long time and if this isn't an incentive to do so I don't know what is. I'll definitely have to find somewhere to put that though because I love the artwork. So we had good mail all round and that has <laughs> somewhat cheered me up after the stress of the work I've just been doing. My phone just decided to glitch in every single way possible and I got very very stressed out very very quickly so I just put my phone on charge and left it for a while. I've already restarted it about three times but hopefully it will work when I go back to it now because I really need to get this thing done before the sun goes down. <laughs> I've ended up with quite a busy day today. I thought it would be fairly chilled, but the work I'm currently doing is for a sponsorship for Instagram and I didn't know I had a deadline that was for tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't realize it set a deadline because I went to email them saying like, oh, when's this due? And realized that I just never got a notification with the full brief. So I am stressed because I really need to get this done, but I do also need to edit a video for tomorrow, which is what I was meant to be doing now. So the longer I take doing this, the longer I will probably have to work into the night to do that video. And as well as that, I do have reading sprints this evening. So I am booked up for the rest of the day, apparently. <laughs> so yes, I am going to go and do things because you girl's a busy girl. <laughs> Hi guys, it is now Sunday. I haven't vlogged for a couple of days because it's been intense. Friday was just tech problems and I was just incredibly stressed for the entire afternoon. So I just completely forgot to vlog. And then yesterday I was on a video chat for 16 hours because we started doing a live show at 11 a.m. on Saturday. That live show lasted seven and a half hours. We then stayed on a video chat until I had a Patreon live show at nine. That lasted about two hours. And then after that was done, I jumped back onto the initial video chat and just stayed on until about 3 a.m. So I was exhausted <laughs> yesterday. And there was not a single moment in the day in which I wasn't on camera. So that was so intense, but I'm also kind of glad I did it because I just, <laughs> it's nice to have company, especially when you live by yourself, just having company while you're doing anything really is great. The video chats really are a lifeline and they're helping me just feel productive, actually do some reading because 
I know when I'm just left to my own devices here, I'm getting really distracted recently and just not really reading all too much when I'm left of my own accord. So I need to almost assign time to actually read in via reading sprints and stuff to actually do the reading. So that is a basic rundown of what's happened in the past two days. But during all of these reading sprints, I have done a lot of reading, a lot of reading. So on Thursday evening, which I think is where I just stopped vlogging, I did do Patreon reading sprints and oh my God, I finished reading The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. <sighs> so I didn't think I would finish it because I still had about 200 pages left, but I blitzed through it and I did not like it, which is devastating because I adore The Night Circus and I have done for so long. So I thought this book was going to confirm Erin Morgenstern officially as a favorite author because I have this thing where I don't give people the favorite author status until I've read multiple different stories from them and they've consistently impressed me. While I do adore The Night Circus, I wouldn't say Erin Morgenstern is a favorite author because at that point she'd only written one book. So this was going to be the kind of confirming thing. Apart from it doesn't confirm that because I just don't like it. I rated it two stars. <sighs> I've written three pages of notes in my reading journal for this book. I usually do one. I do know that I at least will have a lot of opinions and things to say in my full review because I will be doing a full book review of this pretty soon. But my general thoughts surrounding this book were just, what was the point? There's no clear antagonist. There's no clear plot line in terms of, if I had to break down what these 500 pages actually were in terms of like timeline of events, there's probably like three things maybe that would build the plot line, but not really because that's not what the content is based on. And I will say that it does have lovely writing in terms of you can tell a lot of work has been put into it, but just as a casual reader, I didn't care and it just didn't really have me engaged at all or wanting to read more because I was just like, why are you telling me this? And I have actually tabbed one example of when I say that she uses far too many words for what she's trying to say. I'm not going to go into it too much now because as I said, there will be a full review of it soon, but it got to a point where it just felt excessive. And another thing that felt excessive was just how often we would repeat the thing of everything you've just read not actually being real. I was getting so frustrated because there were so many instances of you reading something, but then by the end of the chapter, you actually find out it was all a dream or it was a hallucination or, they were dead and seen some kind of other world or like there was just something that would make it not real. But it did it so many times that I was getting frustrated because I'm like, can you just tell me what is real, please? <laughs> and I understand that it's all meant to be this like dreamlike quality, which it does definitely do. After like the seventh time, I just started getting really frustrated because I was like, please, can you just follow a tangent? Just a singular tangent, stop going off on 700 of them, just one, one will do. And yeah, it was just this, whole thing of why am I reading this? Like, what is the point of this? What, why? <laughs> I was really surprised actually, because there were elements of this that reminded me of the Night Circus, which were the smaller stories that were woven into it. And I do think that there is some level of masterful writing in terms of you have like time jumping in here, you have multiple different worlds and universes, you have all these different things woven together that would be really difficult to kind of manage but there just wasn't a driving force behind the book. So I just really struggled to get through it because I'm like, why are you telling me this? So unfortunately, as I said, I did rate this book two stars and I'm very sad about that. I can see why other people would like it because it's almost hypnotic in the dreamlike quality. So it's like you can read it and just relax almost because there wasn't any kind of climatic scenes in here. Like there wasn't any picked up pace or tempo all the way through this book. You just read it and accepted that things were weird and wonderful. And that was the sort of book it was, but I just don't get along with that kind of thing. So not for me. However, I did <laughs> yesterday during the reading sprints that we did during the day, I did read the entirety of The Passion of Hades by Liza Rain and Rose Wilson. This is the second book in the Hades Trials series, which is a Greek myth retelling in which Persephone is living in modern day New York. She's kidnapped by Zeus and taken to compete in the Hades Trials, which is a set of trials to decide Hades' next wife, basically. Now she actually already exists as Persephone. She was a goddess, but she was sent to the mortal world and everybody was forced to forget her for some reason. We don't know the reason when we start, but we are trying to find out. That's one of the mysteries that we've been through the entire book. But in the meantime, she is forced to compete in these trials. Now, I absolutely loved this book. I was just so in it 
so into the story. I fell straight back into the world and the plot line so quickly and it really picks up pace in terms of you have an escalation of both the romance elements but also the trials and the actual like Greek god politics I guess going on in the background. Everything became so much more intense and I read it so quickly because this was 250 pages so it's not a huge book but I did read it during the reading sprints which is very quick for me <laughs> because it meant that at one point I read 100 pages within an hour which usually I would read like 50, 60 so I read double the amount I usually would within that time frame and I was shook like that, that <laughs> That's how into this book I was and how quickly it all picks up pace and everything because I was just like frantically turning the pages. The angst in this book is so intense and like the conflicting emotions of everybody within it really. So Hades and Persephone, they both have really authentic, complicated feelings in what they want to do, what would be comfortable, what they both know but don't really want to admit and just it makes for such a good build up in a romance and I loved it so much. Like with the first book as well, I also found this funny because the dialogue is just, it's spot on. It has sarcasm and it just, it's really rare for me to actually find a book funny because if I know it's trying to be funny, then I don't like it. But this really caught me off guard and it just felt so authentic all the way through. And I also just really liked seeing a development in the world because in this book we get to see more elements of the different Greek gods domains because we would go to different places and that was really fun to read. The trials themselves, some of those were things that I hadn't read before in other books which do have trials and competitions and stuff because that is quite a common trope in a lot of books but I really liked reading about them in this one because all of the trials are testing a different element such as intelligence and loyalty and so seeing how that was done was really interesting and I just, oh, I don't have a bad word to say about this honestly because it just felt right, like it felt the right length, it felt the right speed, it felt just like a really successful build up of events and I honestly cannot wait to get to the next book because oh my god did this book end on a cliffhanger and it is one of those things where it's like I'm annoyed but also smart because I absolutely need to read the next book so you've, you've played it right, you've played me. So this one I rated 4.5 stars just because I wouldn't call it like a favourite book but very very close so I'm having a great time reading these but highly recommend them if you're wanting some fantasy romance because it's just great and it's quick and it's fun. <laughs> right now though I am just going to finish up this and then put a whole load of books away. I currently just have stacks of books on my office floor that need rehoming on my shelves because I didn't have room for them before so I need to make room and reorganise my bookshelves so I think I'm gonna go and do that because I am going to be working again tomorrow onwards and I just kind of want- <laughs> I'm on this like endeavour to make my house tidy again because it just keeps ending up a mess and then my vacuum cleaner broke so I had to wait to get one of those and it's just this ongoing thing that I keep trying to battle to get my house as tidy as I would want it to be and then something else happens and yada yada yada. There's been a lot to sort out since living by myself and it's just not been a thing that I've been able to get on top of recently because there's been a lot going on but I'm hoping to do it slowly but surely. One thing being the office room because I do want to sort that out so that I do just have like a clear space to work in and at the minute the books are where the ring light usually lives so I need to put them away so that I can get the ring light out of the way and it's just a big chain reaction so I'm going to go and do that and I shall see you later today. Please ignore the fact that I'm just like a nine-year-old. <laughs>
I have just blitzed my entire house, spring cleaning, and I feel so good for it. I've been needing to do a big deep clean for ages, and something in my brain just went, now, do it right now. So I did. <laughs> I feel so much better for it. Like I just instantly feel calm because it's been stressing me out for so long and now it's just sorted. It's been a productive day actually. I do still need to start editing this vlog. And I actually do have a live show at eight for Fire of Feb. It's like the wrap up event that we're doing. So I will be doing that. So I am actually going to wrap up this vlog here because no more reading shall be done today and I will be busy for the rest of the evening. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like or a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, I'll leave a link to anything I mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.